Val Selva described the maneuver in 1704 as forced expiration against closed mouth and nose. It was meant to expel exudates and foreign bodies from middle ear. Even now, ENT surgeons use variants of this. It was later that Weber described the cardiovascular, that is hemodynamic effects of Valsalva manure. Still later, the manure was standardized. Originally, it was a mercury. Now it is aneroid. And the subject has to blow and maintain 40 millimeters of mercury pressure for 15 seconds. That's how it, it is standardized. So, you know, it is not just training. It is a specific pressure is maintained. So it is easy to compare for research studies. Hemodynamic response to Valsalva maneuver can be better documented by invasive intra-arterial pressure recording. In the initial strain phase, there is rise in intra-arterial pressure which is associated with reflex bradycardia. When the strain is sustained, there is a gradual fall in blood pressure which is associated with reflex tachycardia. Soon after release, there is a dip in blood pressure and which is followed by an overshoot that is known as Valsalva overshoot and Valsalva overshoot is associated with reflex bradycardia. If you do a Valsalva maneuver on yourself and continue to feel the pulse, you can easily make out this reflex bradycardia in the over, overshoot phase. That is phase 4. And there is something known as square wave response classically seen in overloaded heart as in heart failure. There are no four phases this is the square wave response. With strain, blood pressure gets elevated and it remains so till the strain is released. There is no overshoot. That is because preload is high. Now, Valsalva maneuver has diagnostic and therapeutic uses. It can be used to differentiate murmur of aortic stenosis from hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy.